Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our first lesson on the first topic of Form 4, which is called Thin Lenses. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that not all positive changes feels positive in the beginning. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the first chapter of Form 4, which is called Thin Lenses. So this chapter is closely related to a certain chapter in Form 2 work which we looked at, which was called Reflection at Curved Surfaces. So today we are going to look at the types of lenses. So basically we have two major types of lenses. One, we have what we call the concave or the diverging lenses. Two, we have what we call the convex or the converging lenses. So for a concave lens, remember in Form 2 you are looking at uh, concave mirrors and um, convex mirrors, but under from four, we are, we are going to look at the concave lenses and also the convex lenses. So basically, a concave lens is also called a diverging lens. The reason being that it usually diverges all the rays of light uh, after refraction. So concave lenses are usually thin or narrow at the center and they diverge rays after passing through the those particular lenses. So we have different uh, types of uh, concave or diverging lenses. One, we have what we call a biconcave lens, such as this one shown here. So bi means two. So we are simply taking two concave lenses. Then we are combining them together to form a double or a biconcave lens. Then two, we have what we call plano concave lenses. So the word plano simply means that this particular lens is actually plain or it is straight on one side. That is on the left hand side as shown here. But one side is actually curved therefore this one we call it a plano uh, concave lens but if you combine two uh, concave lenses they form what we call a biconcave lens so this is our uh, concave lens so we have said that a concave lens is also called a diverging lens because it diverges rays of light um, after passing through the mirror so you can clearly see that the rays of light uh, which are close and parallel to the principal axis Upon reaching this particular concave lens, they actually diverged from a certain point which we are calling F or simply the principal focus. So you can see that the, the incident rays are parallel to each other and they are also parallel to the principal axis. But upon reaching our concave lens, they actually diverged. So to diverge is simply to move from a common point towards different directions. Then B, we have what we call the convex lens, also called converging lens. So they are called converging lens because they converge or um, they focus the rays of light to a common point. So convex lens, also called converging lenses, they are usually thick at the center as shown in this particular diagram. It is very thin, uh, that is thick at the center. And they also converge rays to the focal point after passing through the lens. So when you combine two convex lens together, they form what we call a biconvex lens. So this is a biconvex lens. If you take only uh, one convex lens, of course, if one side is actually plain or straight, such as this side, while the other side is curved, then it forms what we call a plano convex lens. Then this is now our convex lens or converging lens. So converging because you can see that our incident rays upon reaching this particular lens, they are actually converged to a common point, hence the word converging lens. So this particular point where uh, the rays are actually converged, we call it the uh, principal focus, the principal focus. So let's look at a few definitions involving the lenses. So one, we have what we call the principal focus, which is noted by uh, capital F. So for concave lens or for diverging lens, you can see that this is our point F whereby all rays which are close and parallel to the principal axis, they appear to be diverging from this particular point F. So it is diverging from this point moving uh, in that direction. It is also, this ray is also appearing to be uh, emanating from this particular point, then it is being diverged outward. So of course, this particular line here is what we are calling our principal uh, axis, the principal axis. So we can simply say that the focal, that is the principal focus for the concave lens or for the diverging lens can, can be defined as a point on the principal axis from which 
rays parallel and close to the principal axis appear to diverge from after refraction by the lens. So you can see that this particular two rays, so this is one ray, we have another ray here. So these particular rays are close and parallel to the this particular principal axis. But upon reaching our um, concave mirror, they actually diverge in such a way that they are appearing to be uh, originating from our principal focus, that is point F. Therefore, uh, we can simply say that for concave lens, our principal focus is simply a point on the principal axis from which rays parallel and close to the principal axis appear to divide from after refraction by the lens. Then we can also define the principal focus for the case of um, convex lens or what we call the converging lens. So you can see this is our F for the case of converging lens. So you can see that all rays which are close and parallel to this particular principal axis, they are appearing uh, to be focused or to converge at the point F. Therefore, for the case of convex or converging lens, the principal focus can be defined as a point on the principal axis to which rays parallel and close to the principal axis converge after refraction by the lens. So you can see this particular ray and this ray, they are close and also parallel to this particular principal axis. Upon refraction, they are actually converging or they are meeting at a common point F. So this particular point F, this is what we are calling the principal focus. So for the convex or for the converging lens, the principal focus F is simply defined as a point on the principal axis to which rays parallel and close to the principal axis converge after refraction by the lens. Next, our second term of definition is what we call the center of curvature denoted by capital C, which refers to the center of the sphere of which the surface of the lens is a part. So it is important to always remember that the concave and the convex lenses are usually obtained from spheres, uh, that is parts of the spheres. Like for this case, you can see this is our first sphere, then uh, we also have our second sphere. So when you cut this particular part of the two spheres, they form what we are calling a biconvex lens. So the centers, that is the center which is noted by C, the centers of this particular sphere from which we cut our concave and the convex lenses, so that, that center is what we are calling the center of curvature. So similarly, for the case of um, a biconcave uh, lens, you can also see that we are having two spheres. So this is our first sphere of radius R and center uh, C. Then also our second sphere, of course, of the same same radius R and center C. Then in between, this particular shaded part is what we are, what is forming, what we are calling a biconcave lens lens. So the centers from which our um, concave and convex uh, lenses are obtained from, so the centers of those particular spheres is what we are calling the centers of curvature. So it is simply the center of the sphere of which the surface of the lens is apart. Secondly, we define what we call the radius of um, curvature denoted by small r. So it is defined as the radius of the sphere of which the surface of the lens is apart. So these spheres from which we obtain our concave and the convex lenses, so the radius of these particular spheres, for example, the radius of this particular sphere here will be equal to the radius of curvature, which is small r. Similarly, the radius of this particular sphere, that is small r, will be equal to uh, what we are calling the radius of curvature denoted by small r. So simply the radii or the radius of these particular spheres from which we obtain either the concave or the convex lenses. So that radius is what we are calling the radius of curvature. So radius of curvature noted by small r is simply the radius of the sphere of which uh, the surface of the lens will always be apart. So apart simply means that the distance from the center of curvature uh, to actually the circumference of that particular circle will always be equal from the centers of curvatures. So Mathematically, we can simply say that the radius of curvature will always be equal to the distance from the center of curvature noted by uh, that is C to the optical center because in between, so the center of this particular uh, biconcave lens, so its center, that is what we are calling the optical center. So the distance from the optical center to the center of curvature will always be equal to the radius of curvature. Similarly, the distance from O, that is the optical center, to the center of curvature, it will always be equal to the radius of that particular curvature. Then later on, we shall see that the distance from the optical center up to the principal focus will always give you the focal length. So that simply means that 
Also, the distance from uh, the principal focus to the center of curvature will always be equal to the focal length. So that simply means that if you take focal length plus another focal length, you will simply get the radius of curvature because radius of curvature is the distance or C, while the distance or F represents the uh, focal length. Similarly, the distance from F to C will always be equal to the focal length. So actually, the distance FC will always be equal to the distance or F. Therefore, we can simply conclude that the radius of curvature will always be equal to twice the focal length of either a concave or a convex lens. And that is the same same case for the concave mirrors and also for the convex mirrors as we looked at, at, that, at that particular topic of reflection at curved surfaces that is in form 2. So our fourth definition is what we are calling the principal axis which simply refers to an, Im an imaginary line passing through the centers of curvatures. So you can see this particular line here, it is passing through this particular center of curvature, it is also passing through this particular center of curvature. So this particular imaginary line which is connecting these centers of curvatures, this is what we are calling the, uh, that is the principal axis. So it is an imaginary line uh, passing through the centers of curvatures. Similarly for this diagram, this is what we are calling our principal axis which is actually in color green. So this is what we are calling our principal axis, just an imaginary line connecting the centers of curvatures. So similarly, the line connecting this center to also this center is what we are calling the radius, uh, that is the principal axis. Then our fifth definition is what we call the optical center denoted by O, which simply refers to a point or the principal axis midway between the lens surfaces. So uh, like for this case, so this O, this particular O here, that is what we are calling our optical center. So remember that the distance between optical center up to uh, the end or the surface of our biconvex lens will always be equal to the distance from the optical center to this other actually surface of our biconvex lens. So in this particular diagram, the uh, that is the optical center will be represented by this particular O. So the distance from O up to uh, the end of the mirror will always be, be equal to the distance from O, that is the optical center, up to the other surface or the end of that particular mirror. So the optical center is simply a point on the principal axis which is midway. So that simply means it's like a midpoint of our either biconcave or biconvex lens. So it is a point on the principal axis midway between the lens and the surface. Our sixth definition is what we call the focal lens denoted by small f. Remember that the principal focus is denoted by capital F, whereas the focal length is denoted by small f. So the focal length simply refers to the distance between the optical center and the principal focus, which is denoted by capital F. So the distance from the optical center O to the principal focus denoted by capital F, so this distance, which is small f, is what we are calling the focal length. So the distance between the optical center and the principal focus. So it is important to note that you can also find uh, the focal length by simply taking the radius of curvature, then you divide it by two. So radius of, that is focal length, will always be equal to half the radius of curvature, which is the distance from O up to C, but the focal length is the distance from O up to F, where O represents the optical center, while F represents the principal focus. Then focal length of a converging lens uh, is usually real. So real simply means it can be formed on the screen or it is on the positive side of that particular mirror. Whereas uh, while that, that is the focal length of a concave or diverging lens is usually virtual. So virtual simply means that it is imaginary as we shall see in this particular diagrams here. So you can see that the focal length, the distance from O up to F, like for this case of convex lens, actually this particular focal length will be real because it is it will be in front of the mirror that is from O up to F but for the case of this particular concave lens actually the O that is the F that is the focal length will be uh, it will be virtual or imaginary so the reason being that uh, the reason being that a concave uh, lens will always have an imaginary principal focus. So if the principal focus is imaginary, automatically the distance from principal focus up to the optical center will also be virtual or imaginary. 
So uh, for the case of that is the focal length of a converging or a convex lens is usually real or it is in front of the mirror while that of a concave or diverging lens will always be virtual or behind the mirror. So the distance f up to o that is what we are calling the focal length. Similarly the distance from o up to f that is the focal length. Then lastly we look at uh, the focal plane which is defined as a point of the principal axis uh, of the principal axis f that is the principal focus f and perpendicular to the principal axis at which parallel rays not parallel to the principal axis they converge after refraction so you can see for this particular case we have this particular rays so these are incident rays uh, which are actually parallel to each other but they are not parallel to this particular principal axis but upon refraction they actually converge at the point f and for the case of um, that is for the case of concave lenses the rays will always appear as if they are emanating or originating from the point f so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that not all positive changes feels positive in the beginning so the quote is reminding us that sometimes change will feel uncomfortable at the beginning but that does not mean that you should stop the change therefore provided that the change which is happening in your life is intended to improve your life then you should not hesitate to let it happen and lastly recall that lastly recall that the seeds of success are bitter but its fruits are sweeter thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified until next time this is kind tuition academy thank you very much